All right, it's Monday morning. We've had to put a new brake chamber on this morning and fix this air leak right here. Oh, let me see if I can show it to you. This right here is the low air buzzer switch right there. That's uh, that's an air over electric switch that lets you know uh, when your air pressure gets low, it makes a buzzer come on. So, anyway, I wanted to do an air test before I left, make sure that new brake chamber was okay. So, uh, long story short, I heard something leaking back here when I hit the brake so Got to go back and try and figure out what's causing this before I leave. And uh, still got to go load today. So, Whew, it's going to be a Monday. Alright, so we had found an air leak again. Right there on that uh, that is the service line going to that valve that goes to the brake chambers. And it was leaking. I didn't hear it. I had uh, I had my buddy, we did an air test the other day, but he didn't want to get my truck because it, he was so dirty. And uh, anyway, he put his foot or, or stood on the on the ground hit the brake pedal with his hand and anyway that's why I didn't hit it hard enough I got mom going there and hit it hard long ago and I found it so we're fixing to do another air test on this thing make sure everything's good and tight when we get the brakes and uh, then we're going to head out and go load uh, I was going to try to put all my uh, lower dash and everything put, put, put it back in for a left but that's not going to happen I'm going to do that while, while I'm loading and Oh, we're going to get out of here. Hey there. Oh, yeah, I was going to show y'all. When I went to the parts store a while ago, I was running low, running low on airline splices. I think I was down to, like, I think I got a couple of these eighth inch, and I think I may have a quarter somewhere in there, but I went ahead and uh, went ahead and got a few stock up. That way, uh, if you ever broke down, you got an airline leak, you can fix it on the road and get gone quick, kind of like we did today. All right, typical Monday morning bullshit here. Stay in your truck, lower passenger window, wait for buzzer, pull around. This guy, after he sits here trying to, he got on the scale probably running, I don't know, maybe 0.5 mile an hour. And first thing he does is after it takes him 30 seconds to pull his whole truck on the scale he gets out of the truck and walks inside so I, I just like I can't I, I just don't know I just can't with some of these stupid truck drivers anymore this is uh it just gets it seems like it gets worse worse and worse and worse but especially with the drive man I mean I say this every week when I come here good god I mean it's just like I mean, pay attention. Read a sign. You know, I know the signs sometimes contradict themselves and, and what have you, but I mean, it's just like, come on. I mean, there's part of some common sense in this, and this is really not that hard. I adjusted my clutch this weekend, and I got as much free travel in it as I usually do, but this clutch is so touchy. Like, I've spun out twice and gravel this one. Once at the shop, just right then, so. Yeah, all right. That truck's from Alberta, so you can imagine what kind of driver is in that one. <laughs> See? It even says it right there again. Matter of fact, they'll give you a green light, too. I'm not going to sit here and video if she ain't going to hurry. Okay. All right. I was going to let y'all hear the buzzer, but uh, I don't know. It's taking her a minute. But I rolled down my window just like they wanted me to, and I stayed in my truck just like they wanted me to. It's not rocket science, guys. Okay, so I've got my panels back on a while ago. Got that knocked out. I just left them off a while ago when I put that in. Air, uh, low air switch in because I just thought I can do that when I'm loading. And uh, I checked my oil leak where on that peanut cover where that bolt was missing. And no oil leak, amazing, amazing. So 
we're knocking them out one by one and one thing that I never got around to that I did not think I would need was uh, the air conditioner working properly I don't know I couldn't I could never pinpoint what what the deal was because I never did have like enough time to just sit down and try and figure it out but I finally got to the point where it's just like it's fall and I should be able to what little bit is working it's not blowing that cold uh, I don't know I'm, I hadn't even checked to see if the compressor is even turning on so it may just I don't know it I know like everything was working right on it like pressure wise and everything so we uh, I forget what we had on on the low side it seems like we was around 30 pounds on the low side and and running about 150 on the high with the uh, with the fan on and both units going and that was back in the summer sometime when I was trying to get all this lined out and had a bunch of other stuff going on so I really never did get it lined out but I got it to where it was kind of cool you know as long as it wasn't like 100 degrees but I, I don't know I think the best thing I can do is tough it out because you know maybe a couple more weeks uh, I mean like we're it's October 31st you know it's like 80 I want to say like 85 or 86 degrees right now so I mean I may have to tough it out even though I go to South Louisiana a lot and you know it'll be 80 degrees in December down there may just have to tough it out for and uh, and then spring just I basically just start all over again you know just probably leave the evaporator in the truck uh, change the expansion valve in the sleeper put a new orifice tube uh, in the cab here uh, new accumulator and uh, new compressor of course and a uh, new condenser out front just do all that uh, I want to check my lines and everything real good before uh, before I do it I'll probably before I do it I'll probably just pump pump a little bit of Freon or at least check and make sure it's got pressure on it but if it don't have any pressure just put a little Freon in it to see make sure it get some with some dye in it and make sure it don't have any leaks or anything so anyway it's hot but we are knocking this thing out one by one one project at a time uh, this weekend I've got to come home it's just it's a mess with some of this stuff they've got some I don't your v-belts for your fan they've got some some ones that like it takes wide ones for your fan and they've got some that are as thin as the ones that go on the air conditioner and the uh, alternator the accessory belts there so you're gonna have to change that out I want to get my bumper on I want to get polished out uh, I'm sure I'll have a couple other things but those are some of the bigger ones that I want to do before uh, before I go back out again but uh, it looks like here in a couple weeks I, I'm going to be taking off. Uh, I've got to go to Nashville for a couple days, and uh, uh, basically, uh, I, I'm not going to say why I go to go to Nashville for a couple days. So, okay, I, I was going to, just can't. All right, I'm fixing to jump out and figure out what project I can do next while they're waiting to start loading. Me. All right, so there's the fuel tank vent right there. If you look on the back, well, this one don't have one. There's usually a little nipple to run a little eighth inch like a vacuum line on it. And what happens with these things, if you don't put those lines over there, if you don't keep them, a little vacuum line, looks like a little four-wheeler fuel line or a vacuum line off a, off a car. If you don't keep them on there, shit will get up in there and clog that up. And I'm sure that's what happened, so. We're going to take these channel locks and get them off and see if we can unplug, unclog this thing and get the fuel returning right to both tanks. Well, like I told you, there it is. There's where that little nipple goes right there. It's all clogged up, so I'm going to say that's our problem. And that's what it looks like when it's completely clean. So we got everything cleaned up on here. Time to stick it back in there. I squeezed it a little too hard and kind of popped the top of it off. I think it'll be all right, but uh, 
it's probably extra vented now. Alright, so uh, that's about all I'm going to do there today while I'm loading. I hate to do this stuff while I'm loading because I usually put two small piles in the front here and then they come out and said, hey, uh, we got 10 bags in the front there. And I'm like, okay, well, that's, uh, that's good, I guess. Uh, I guess I'm loaded in the front, but I got one big pile where I usually put a uh, small pile right here and then right in the next uh, in between the next two bows I put another small pile so kind of screwed that up but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna I'm gonna back up to put a pile in front of that pile in the back and I'll just shake everything down backwards and try and shift as much weight of this backwards as I can hopefully it won't be heavy on my drives even though like I'm not really going anywhere where I'm really that worried about it so but I do like to, it's just a challenge to me to try and see how how close I can get my axle weights and how good I can do on that. So that's just a, a self-challenge thing. One more thing, y'all may ask why I wanted to fix that vent just in case, you know, or even though I'm, I'm just gonna run that one tank. And uh, the answer to that is, you know, I'm, I, wanna, I want to get those tanks where they'll equal out and then when I get the other one fixed or replaced uh, you know I can run both tanks to full capacity but you know I want to get the problem fixed because even if I'm running that one tank on the driver's side there and the vent is stopped up it's going to start putting pressure on the return uh, system and all the way back to the uh, back to the engine where where the return comes out of and that's a that's the hottest fuel that comes I mean the fuel runs all the way through the engine through the head and comes out the back and where it returns i mean that's hot fuel and you keep putting pressure on everything because it, if it's the vent stopped up it's it's like it's going to have a restriction somewhere and usually that splitter valve is the one weakest link so what will happen with it is it will start uh it'll start leaking out through where it's put together and uh I may just go on and put a new splitter valve on there, just replace all that junk and be done with it. Get, just get that stuff coming this weekend and do that. Uh, I'm just, I am going to see how, how this truck responds to having that one vent blown out, which is, it's responded a heck of a lot better because I, just opening the tank up and listening to the, how much different the sound is with the, uh, with how much more return is coming back through there than was and i can see like yeah there was a restriction somewhere we're doing a lot better i think so all right done with that okay y'all we're gonna back up and push this stuff to the back a little bit roll get a little bit on there and whoop, right there give her a little shake we're good to go all right, we shook it back just a little bit. I didn't shake it as hard as I wanted to because it didn't uh, didn't fall back as far as I wanted it to, but it's okay. Uh, it's going to be okay. Uh, maybe I need to quit working on my truck near as much and watch what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Train stopped on the track. I need to get over there. Apparently, this guy does too, but he's going to back out in the highway blind. See how this goes. Well, he's got the highway blocked now. Oh man, you are. Oh yeah, you are all twisted up. Look, 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 look. Uh, come on, phone. Like he, he's not even close. He's not even close. I mean, like he should have straightened his truck up long before then. Jeez. This is cute. This is cute. Time he gets done here, this train's gonna be done whatever it's doing probably if he go if he does make this successfully i'm gonna go out i'm gonna back up just a little bit i'm gonna go out to the left uh, oh yeah daniel son daniel son oh yeah wax on wax off Better than I thought he would. I, I figured this 
going to be a trail. I figured he'd back out in front of somebody. Uh, just the way the road curves coming from this, coming from like going this way, he should have been able to see pretty good, but uh, we got a mess over here. We got uh, this other train on the other track is probably uh, this local job that works here in Stuttgart. A friend of mine works on that job. And I bet you they are switching cars and they've got this track blocked. So therefore, this mainline Z train is what they call that. It is a intermodal train. Come on, what the world? It's an intermodal train and they are like 70 mile an hour trains. I don't know what is going on with this. There we go. They're 70 mile an hour trains, uh, the all intermodal and um, they get priority. So even if, even if they're not swapping that other train over there that my buddy is probably on, uh, they're hitting the siding for that that high priority train because that local train is going back to Pine Bluff if, they, if that's it. And, uh, oh shoot, I'm going to back up here. Alright, let me concentrate on what I'm doing. I'm sitting here going goof up here. I was going to tell y'all something funny about what that guy did. He backed up that way and then went that way. If he's trying to get to the mill, and them trains are blocking, he's screwed because that overpass right there is the only, only way to get around a train blocking the tracks here in this entire town. So he is screwed, blued, tattooed, any which way he goes at it, but I feel sorry for him, but that's just the way it is. Hey, y'all look. I'm staying in my truck and I'm waiting for the buzzer and the green light. I successfully pulled this off two times in a row. Cannot believe it. Y'all look at me. This is what I look like today. And the only way to get this truck lined out is to look like this more often. So, I mean, I, think about when I first got that 359 I worked just like this on that truck I mean like I was so disgusted like it was three weeks before I hauled a load with it I had engine trouble on the way home with it. I had to pull the head off of it I bought it on a Saturday Monday morning I had the head off of it so I may have to end up rebuilding this motor and I mean like if I rebuild the motor, I'll probably rebuild the transmission at the same time. So, and that requires putting a new clutch in. You know, there's probably going to be a lot of things I do. Well, I won't rebuild this engine. Let me rephrase that. It will be my 1LW, the one that come out of here. I'm planning on, unless something comes up where I can't, or I don't know, something happens. I mean something drastic but the plan is to get the 1LW back in this truck and to uh, build it bulletproof put a better tune in it um, don't know if we're going to do like a camshaft uh, we may put bigger injectors in it and I don't know I mean it's just one of those things but I do want to I do want a good turbo and a good tune don't want to go outrageous with we got to go get our paperwork and head on down the road.
All right, I want to show y'all a little something right here. If you look right there, this is what keeps a Peterbilt fuel tank on is this pin with a washer and a cotter key. But there's no washer or cotter key there. And if you can see, there ain't been one there for a long time. So we all found a washer that will work. side of the road last uh, was last Tuesday got it fixed uh, got it fixed too so anyway I decided I would every time I stop I would try to I tried to work on something little by little just going Look at those big hardwood logs. I couldn't tell what they were. They looked like they were cypress trees, but if those are cypress trees, they were probably 400 years old. Dang. I hate to see that stuff like that get cut.
do it better. I remember to turn that tank off and swap over my other tank. So, yeah. I got some stuff, I think, figured out on that level of that, or that fuel leveling deal, but it's, uh, it's gonna have to wait till this weekend. Hopefully I can get the parts and, uh, get it fixed, but yeah, that's, that's definitely what it is right at dusk. And we can't get our high beams to go off. Can't get a blinker to work. Everything was working earlier. I don't know what's going on here, but we're pulling over here in a mile. We're here on 55. I'm gonna stop at exit 220. One of my favorite places here, right there. My weather's dirty. Yeah. So we're gonna stop and see about getting this mess fixed. I'm just gonna stop and get a uh, something to eat in the shower and uh, splash some fuel on. But apparently we're gonna have to do what we did in the parking lot here last Tuesday night, which is work on a truck. My starter went out here and I had to pick on it, which I don't, I still don't understand the whole deal with the starter. I didn't really get into it with you guys on that because it was just, it's really weird. So anyway, we're gonna get out, work on this, get our hands dirty and go in and take a shower. I am, I'm ready to eat, take a shower. I'm ready to freshen up and get this day started because it was really, really hot in air conditioner. It's not working quite as good. I thought I had waited long enough to get in this thing. I thought it was going to be cool enough uh, in the days down south and definitely in the, up north, but apparently not. So let's go in here and see what's going on with the old truck. All right, so here we are working on this. We've kind of went, I kind of hit a few things on the fuse box and everything over here. And uh, I just, something wasn't adding up. So I thought I would take this, uh, take this cover apart, this lower column cover apart. And lo and behold, I found this this is uh this works uh your fly uh, uh, high beams and uh this works your turn right here and i guess this wire has come out of here but apparently i may have another wire looks like it may have come out of that terminal too so that's why oh maybe i don't know man we got a mess but i'm guessing it got twisted up in this drive shaft here so I've got to figure out what exactly is going on and how to fix it. Oh, yeah, it did. It did pull out of this. So there's the wire right there, and it goes to one of the blinkers, and uh, I guess it goes right there. Holy crap, what a mess I've got today. So I've got to fix this real quick and get back in the road.
right, y'all. We're at the Flying J here in Indianapolis. Oh, the OD hooker capital of the world. And we've got these bolts right here. And they go to uh, my stainless panels that mount to my boxes. So last week I stopped in here and I didn't have time to mess with the guy to get it done. I put them in my boots to get that done. Uh, last week because I, I bought the panels last week at effingham and i wanted to get them done but i was in a hurry i wanted to get down there and get loaded so i could i, I wanted to hurry up and get down there and, and sit 11 hours before i got loaded and uh, just in such a hurry to do that i couldn't couldn't get this done in time so <sighs> nonetheless we got uh i come in here today and the guy told me he said i'll get them made next week he said just come in i told him i'll be in here next wednesday he's like yep just bring them in so anyway, I come in there today. He wasn't there, of course, after I had missed the exit because of construction. They've got the exits like, I don't know, two miles down that way. And you really got to be paying attention to uh, to not miss the exit. So anyway, that's what I did. I missed the exit. I had to go get off at the next exit, and they were doing construction there, and they didn't have a way to get back on. So I had to go turn around, get back on 465, go under 65 to the next exit, and then make a U-turn. So just doing this getting here was just an ordeal but the guy wasn't here and i'm like my god no so anyway the girl that was working there uh she ends up like i tell her you know hey he told me to come in today anyway she uh she's like well i really ain't got time he she said well i i can i can probably help you get figure out your font and everything he said she said can you leave the panels so i left the panels long story short left the panels we figured out a font. I paid her, got everything paid on it, and they're going to look great, I think. I hope. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of I'm actually kind of excited about them. So anyway, I got to get going here. Uh, we're going out to uh, going out to New Paris, Ohio. The next stop, we're going to stop for Petro out there and uh, get something to eat. I'm starving and take a shower and then finish up our trip. We got to go. Uh, got to load some meal tomorrow and go to memphis so uh yeah i plan on doing a full video tomorrow on like loading and unloading and all that jazz even though it's a, a run that i've done before recently and i'm still gonna do it anyway all right catch y'all up there <laughs>
so we are going in here to go load hopefully I'm gonna holler I'm gonna get out and holler at the guy real quick I don't see him anywhere in here not one place in here so ah uh, don't see the loader don't see nothing I'm not going in here and sitting in this mess until I know that he is here and uh, it stinks in there and I'm not I'm not going in there we're going to picking up some some of this stuff right here some of this uh, I'm guessing this some kind of I think it's pork meal actually is what this is this is just ground up pork guts uh, it's all all the crap that they don't only thing left after they don't put the, that they don't put in the balloon they grind it up and that's it so I'm gonna get out and try and find this guy, see where the hell he's at, man. I'm gonna get loaded and get out of here. I gotta get through Indianapolis today before, uh, well, I've got to go pick up my new sign at uh, Flying J there, the sign shop there. But, oh, uh, yeah, it's uh, traffic. I'm gonna be coming in on, on the north side on 69 there and hitting 465 going around. And if, this guy will hurry the hell up. I won't get in it too bad, but it's uh, that whole north uh, northeast side of Indianapolis, man. It's a, it's a train wreck a lot of days. So we're just trying to trying to get down there and beat all the beat all the crap. It ain't looking good if he ain't here. I don't know if he's gone to lunch or or what, but I mean, I would have. He knew what time I was gonna be here, so I mean, like, I would have stopped and maybe got some lunch. But no, no, no. Anyway. All right, well, let me get out and see if I can walk around trying to find somebody. All right, so I made a couple phone calls and I found out where that guy is. He is right there at that grain elevator that I weighed in at a while ago, but I never seen his pickup there. I think he drives like a black or blue F-250. I think that's what he drives. I know it's a Ford F-250, but, uh, yeah, I called around and it's like, hey, you're supposed to call a day ahead and let us know you're coming. So I'm like, I'm not sure, you know, nobody told me. So anyway, the uh, the people we're picking this load up for has been hounding the guy hall for like, what time is he gonna be there? What time is he gonna be there? What time is he gonna be there? And I'm here and now this guy don't even know that I'm coming. So I just, there's a breakdown in communication. Uh, pretty typical, uh, you know, this is just the way trucking works sometimes. Uh, the better you communicate, the easier trucking is, I will say that. But uh, sometimes uh, it's out of your hands when you don't really know everything that's going on. So. Uh, that's that's that and I'm just gonna wait on this guy and hopefully we can get in here and get loaded quick and get the hell out of here Well, just like last time we are Having to spin around in here. I know it's a lot easier in here that with this uh, 379 than it is my 359. So we're really not, we're not twisting around as bad. I had to back up over in that corner in front of that loader, get my trailer over that far. Once I got my trailer over that far, if they would have moved that fucking pickup, uh, I could have just really made that without jacking it around. But you know, when it comes to people and what they need to do around trucks people are stupid and they can't help it because they just don't know but i mean like they just park crap in the way and no big deal they'll just spin around and eat their tires up and wear their trailer suspension out yeah yeah that's all cool but like i said people don't really realize that or know that that's what's going on or you know and most most drivers don't care i mean they just spin it around on the dime piss on it and uh I mean, most guys wouldn't even took the time to get their trailer over and back further. They just start turn around right there. So, 
I'm just trying to watch over my equipment, do the best I can with that. But we're going up here to this little co-op to weigh out. And uh, I don't know if y'all noticed my gauge back there. My gauge is, uh, it's in a little pod in the front of my trailer. And uh, that little, that gauge had turned inside that pod. And I was having to watch from like 30 feet away because the wind was blowing through that door back there and it was just blowing that crap all over me and uh, I was trying to watch but I didn't know that gauge had rotated so where I was kind of watching that gauge from it actually loaded a little bit more and he had put more in there than uh, than what I wanted in the front so I'm kind of curious to see how that's going to work out alright well let's get on the road run up here to this co-op and see what the damage is all right so we got loaded everything's fine oh man just a pain in the neck the breakdown in communication and i'm kind of i don't know i mean i'm not feeling good today so i mean like i wasn't ready for nobody's shit and i was ready to not take anybody's shit either so uh anyway it Flying J here in Indy. We're fixing to go in here. The moment has arrived for us to get our new signs, and uh, I hope they turn out good. I'm excited. Uh, if they turn out good, it may be the best thing that's happened with this whole project since uh, since it started. So I'm anxious. Uh, the girl call or text just a little bit ago when I was coming around 465 said they're ready. So fix to go in here and check them out and uh, give me a snack. Get back in the road. Okay, so I couldn't stand it. I had to get them out. That's, uh, what my letters look like. I can't find the bolts to put them in. I put them somewhere where I wouldn't forget them and I forgot them. So, I don't want to put them on anyway. Uh, I'm going to get washed tomorrow probably. So, uh, I'll put them on later like when I get home after I get washed and everything because I think they need to be on this truck three or four days so you don't blow them off so I'm uh, I'm pretty pleased with it and can't complain uh looks pretty good to me but uh yeah I think it'll work all righty we have uh got here pulled in here and was the first truck here to unload and uh, when I got to the gate last night the gate was open I thought maybe I should drive on in and see if anybody's working maybe I might get unloaded but uh, apparently I, I guess maybe the night shift or even uh, really evening shift didn't close the gate or something I don't the gate didn't get closed so I almost drove in here and I, I was like yeah I'm gonna park at the gate because I mean like the evening guy may there may still be some evening guys there so I wake up this morning and I see like uh, the gate's still open, but I see a truck down down the way a pretty good bit where you turn and go around these this uh, this building here to come over to the scales. And I'm like, oh man. And then I see a truck in, in this little alley and I'm like, 
that goes in between the buildings that comes back around the scale. I'm like, oh my God, they're backed around there. So I pull, I'm like, first thing I do is like put my clothes on. I'm like, I'm fixing to get up there and get behind that guy right there because I don't want nobody else getting around me. So I come on and uh, I come on around and, uh, or come on behind the guy and I'm just like waiting on people to pull up and nobody ever pulls up. So I notice like the trailer that's in the little alley, it moves over to the closer to the back building back there and the lights go out and I'm like, man, I don't know about this. This don't, this don't look, something don't look right. So anyway, I'm messing around and, uh, apparently there's a pickup that pulls up to the truck in front of me and I'm like, okay, cool. This guy drove and then I realized like, this is one of their company trucks in front of me. And I was like, he's probably just going in here to scale in and then, uh, they'll load his truck some other time and he's going to go back home or do something else. So I was right. Yeah, he did. Uh, he, he pulled on around and I was just like, well, I'm following him on around. So I follow him on around and uh, lo and behold, there's nobody over here. So he weighs in, pulls off and I pull up on the scale and they get my paperwork and turn me around here. But I get over here to the dump and, uh, I'm thinking nobody's over here. I'm gonna pull up in here and the guy's gonna come over here. He's gonna dump me, I'm gonna get out of here. Now he come over to me, he's like, hey dude, uh, we got a broke belt right now. He said, it's gonna be a little bit, so. That's where we are, broke belt. Maybe they'll get it fixed here in the next little bit and we can get out of here. I've got to make a couple stops, get some parts on the way home and uh, and then just go home. I'm ready, ready to be there. It's kind of been a, this week's kind of blown by, I mean it's, kind of been uneventful uh, just you know the the blinker switch wires up under the column got tore loose and really I mean that's that's about it I mean it's it's just been uneventful and I, I'm more than proud and blessed that it is that way so that being said I'm fixing to kick back here and enjoy the hot air coming out of my air conditioner. Oh, turn the fan on. Maybe that'll help. Okay. All right. So we're just going to sit here. We'll see you when they start unloading us. All right. We got unloaded. Look at the tugboat over there. That's probably a pretty cool job. Now right there is where that truck was sitting this morning. And then they dollied this trailer down over here. So that's what had me messed up. And I was thinking that you know, the end of the line was, you know, this truck back here that was actually in front of me. And I figured they was wrapped around here all the way over here to the scale. And the scale is like right, where's that, right, oh, right there. So, we got unloaded. I got to talking, there's a guy that helps unload here. He's just a really, really nice guy and I got to talking to him, so. Wasn't, it was just a typical unload. You guys didn't miss diddly squat. So, this guy's pulling in now. We're gonna pull up on the scales and scale out and see uh, see what we can do. Go out here and get our log book catched up and uh, we ought to be just about in time for the chrome shop to be open when we get over there. So. We'll probably ease on in there. I've got to get a couple things, and uh, I think there's a truck pro somewhere over here. Right there. All right. I think there's a truck pro somewhere over in West, over in West Memphis. Oh, uh, I'm trying to think where truck pro is in Memphis. Uh, I might stop there. I think truck pro Memphis is real close. So I don't know. I've got to get a couple things. I'm gonna jump out and get my scale ticket. Well, we're here at my favorite place to stop and get breakfast. We got some sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit. I'm fixing to eat this mug and I'm going home. Stopped at the chrome shop. Couldn't find anything I really needed. And I went over to the polish shop next door and they were polishing the truck. The guy was by himself and I don't know. I don't know how good of a polisher he was. He came out and looked at my stuff. He's like, well, I can't get it to a mirror finish. And I'm like, okay, moving on. So, I wish I had time. I mean, like, I could get it done and, and make it look decent. Uh, a lot better than 
a lot of polished guys can, but I hate doing it. And it's tedious, and it takes me a long time to do it right. So I'm not, I'm not good enough that I can do it quick and do it good. So, oh, regardless, we're going home. I got plenty of other stuff I can do. I would wait, you know, I'm hung up on this polishing deal, but I'm tired of looking like this too. I look trashy. So, all right, we're going to the house. Uh, we're going to ride through the fields and watch and see, look and see how much, uh, how much harvest is left. But I'll talk to you guys there.